welcome to another Micro Minute. Uh, so my name is Marty Johnson, and first of all, thank you very much everybody who uh, has been following the other Micro Minutes that I've done and for retweeting them and for sending me information and for sending me questions. We've had quite a few questions uh, and maybe what I'll do is I'll do a sort of a special Q&A episode uh, sort of coming up. Also, obviously, thanks to the lovely people there at Zeiss who are still supporting me with not only the microscopes, but with other resources and things, which hopefully I'll be able to show you in due course. So what have I got for you today? So today I've got a little creepy crawly that I found on my front door, on the inside of my front door, one of the recent sort of sunny periods that we had. Um, it had obviously come out of hibernation and was crawling around on the front door and I captured it, put it in a little pot uh, so that I could show you today. It's only been in there for a little while, don't worry. Um, now, this creature is called Salticus senecus, at least that's its Latin name, and it is a jumping spider. So yes, uh, for those of you that are arachnophobic, maybe give this one a miss. Okay, so let's zoom in a little bit. Uh, here's my, um, I'm just gonna turn that top light off for a second. And here, in the pot here, I have my beastie, my Salticus senecus, my jumping spider. And this is one of the most beautiful of the jumping spiders, I reckon. Um, and you can see, where is it? There, can you see it's up at the top at the moment? It's just there. It's sort of difficult to see. If I just give it a come on. And this this spider, I'll be honest, this spider is quite frisky um, and going to be quite. The, there it is. It's jumped to the bottom. There it is. Can you see? So this is going to be quite an interesting one. Um, I can. I will consider it a success if you guys get to see anything at all. The first problem, and you'll notice in there, there's a little blue piece of sponge, which is cut from my kitchen uh, flannel, which is over there. Um, and that's then soaked in water to, to keep it happy because spiders, they don't eat very often, but they do need a regular source of water, which they just uh, sip on. The problem with that is that it mists up the top of the little pot. So the first thing I have to do is I have to replace the lid of the pot with a fresh one. I was do, I was practicing this earlier and I had this one here. See, look, it's a nice fresh lid, nice and clean. And this one's got breathing holes in it. And of course, the first thing the spider did was crawled straight through the holes and did a runner and went underneath the microscope. Um, anyway, I found it. Um, I'm gonna use this one instead. So if it escapes at this point, that's the end of the show. Um, here we go, right, so I'll loosen this off like that, and then I'll get ready. And if this jumps out, we're good, we're good, we're good. It's still there, it's still there. Right, so I'm gonna put some lights on and uh, let's have a look at Salticus stenicus, the jumping spider. Right, here we are. Here it is, look at that. And this isn't just any old jumping spider. This is a jumping spider. And I've got, I'm going to just move my lighting around. I've got this amazing lighting rig, which allows me to, see, that was probably the best, allows me to um, place the lights in different positions. And if I focus on that, oh, again, we've got a few camera issues there. And then look at that, look at that, look at that. So this spider is called, for fairly obvious reasons, the zebra jumping spider, because it has these amazing markings on it. I don't know if this is a male or a female. Um, you have to kind of flip it over and look at its, its fangs, really, to be able to determine that. But if I just zoom in a little bit on it and get it in the middle, because that's the other important thing, you can see, look at that, isn't it amazing? Isn't it beautiful? And it's got these short, but very sort of fat hairs all over its body um, in kind of a, an arrangement that make it sort of give it this sort of zebra stripes. And one assumes the zebra stripes, stripes are the same reason that zebras in the, on the plains of the Serengeti are, are striped, and that is to camouflage it. Um, but the other thing you can see is, oops, I'll zoom right in on it. And remember, this thing's only about four millimeters across. Look at its eyes. Look at, oh, is it going to move? Is it going to go? No, it's staying still. So it's very much alive, this spider. It's behaving really well today. It's a little bit misty because of some condensation. And it's also built quite a lot of web in here. But can you see at the front, it's got these two huge eyes. And if you could get it, if you could sort of see it from it, the front face, you would see there are the enormous, great big goggle eyes like this. And then it's got a pair here. He's off. 
And then a pair kind of further back. In fact, oh, look, it's turning its head up. Look, there they are. Look, look at those eyes. Isn't that amazing? So it's got these big eyes at the front. And that tells us something about this insect and this, this creature. And this, this applies to anything in the animal kingdom. This thing hunts its prey because it has these eyes at the front, which give it binocular vision, which means it can see depth. It's what we have. OK, and animals that hunt prey tend to have binocular vision. Animals that are preyed upon, so things that this creature would eat or lions or tigers would sort of hunt, they tend to have eyes further round the side so that, oh, it's behaving itself very well, so that they uh, can see all around and they know when something's coming for them. Come back. Here you go. There it is. OK. Yeah, just focus. But it's also got but this spider, because the great thing about spiders is spiders have got multiple pairs of eyes. They've got eight eyes usually. And this pair, it's got a pair sort of down the side of its head, which means that this spider actually also not only does it have binocular front vision, but it has 360 vision all the way around. And what these things do is they're called jumping spiders because when they find something they want to eat, they want to grab, they creep up on it. They they, uh, they uh, what's the word? They prowl up. No, no, they uh, stalk it. That's the word I'm looking for. They stalk up on their prey and then they'll raise their front legs off the ground and then they'll extend their back legs very quickly. Oh, sorry. Didn't like that. And when that happens, it jumps forward. And the, the way they do that and the way spiders actually move their legs is they have. I mean, you and I have got muscles here. You've got a bicep which moves your arm that way and you've got a tricep there which moves your arm that way. So you have a muscle to move your arm in that direction and a muscle to do that. Now, spiders don't have that. They have the biceps, which move their arms or their legs towards their body. But to extend their leg, what they do is they pump fluid. Their, it's called hemolymph. It's their blood. They pump that into their legs, which extends them out. And if they do that quickly, they get a sudden extension, which throws them forward at great speed. It's also why a dead spider curls up on itself, because it loses the pressure and it all just curls up on itself. But anyway, I don't really want, uh, let's go right in. Let's see if we can go right in on its head because it's just a beautiful, beautiful creature. Look at that. There it is. And you can see it's got, you've got all the legs of the spider. You've got the eight legs, but then you've also got two, two, two parts of the spider called the pedipalps, which are these bits just near its face here. And those are for used for manipulating the prey. They're kind of like the arms of a spider. They're a bit like Tyrannosaurus rex arms. They're a bit short and they're only useful for things very, very close. And I'm just focusing there. And you can see its eyes, the big eyes at the front, the ones and then the ones at the side. Right. OK, I've been going on for far too long. If you're interested in spiders, I strongly recommend you get one of these. This is uh, a Guide to House and Garden Spiders, published by the uh, what was it? The Field Studies Council. You can get these off their website. Well, actually, I don't know. At this precise moment, you might not be able to get them off their website, but you can buy them on Amazon and, at, and at sort of online bookshops and stuff like that. And that will allow you to identify all the garden spiders you might find, including these. Right. That's enough of me. So that's enough of me. I'll stay on the spider because, after all, let's face it, that's what it's all about. Um, I've started a YouTube channel. I'm going to be putting these videos onto that. So uh, come and have a look at them on there. There'll be a list, a playlist. I'm just working my way through getting that sorted out. It's all quite complicated. Uh, and there's going to be a website, microminute.co.uk, which is sort of kind of up a bit at the moment. And I'll be working that up to bring everything together. But if you enjoyed this, come back on Monday. I'm going to be doing this Monday, Wednesday and Friday every week for the foreseeable future let's put it that way uh, and i have a huge list of things that i'm going to try and show you uh, if there's anything at all you want to see under a microscope send me a tweet get in touch thanks very much for watching see you soon bye bye